Bonjour, bonjour, bienvenue à cette vidéo. All right, this video is mostly for advanced learners, okay? So if you're not an advanced learner, you might be very confused and it might be frustrating. So stay away if you're not there yet. But for you, if you're advanced, this is going to be super interesting. You're going to love this. All right, you ready? Uh, I noticed uh, over the past few years that there are two things that are pretty technical, uh, big, and that have two completely different translations in English. It's a complete coincidence, I must say. Uh, so we're going to talk about this right now. The first one that I want to mention is how to say uh, you must have done something. And this is a beautiful lesson that I've put in a French 5, as I told you, I think is my favorite level. Uh, there's a great lesson on uh, the translation of you must have done something, you could have done something, you might have done something, you should have done something. Um, and so there's something very particular about the he must have done this, I must have done that. So check this out. If I give you the following sentence, for instance, uh, il a dû partir à 5 heures. Well, that structure, the, ten the verbs used uh, and the, the tenses used can translate into two completely different things in English when you think about it. All right, I'll give you a second to think about it and, and come up with an answer, maybe. All right, I'll tell you. Il a dû partir avant 5 heures. You can understand the two following things. He must have left before 5 o'clock. Or he had to leave before 5 o'clock. And the structure is exactly the same. He had to do something. Il a dû faire quelque chose. He must have done something. Il a dû faire quelque chose. Isn't it fascinating and crazy? And it could be confusing, I'm guessing. But no, if you master it well, you'll see that depending on the context, as always, depending on the context, it's going to be one or the other, and both cannot make sense. Okay? So again, let me give you another example. If I tell you, ils ont dû appeler Jennifer. You can understand two things. They had to call Jennifer or they must have called Jennifer. Two different things. And yet it's exactly the same sentence, same verbs, same tense. All right. Isn't it beautiful? I love this. Confusing. I'll give it to you. But, but interesting. D'accord? The other one that I had in mind is so very random. But listen to this. If you say, il est mort, you can hear two things. They ultimately are almost the same. Almost the same, I would say. Not quite, really. Um, no, not really the same, to be quite honest. Il est mort, you can understand two things. Again, I'll give you five seconds to think about it. Okay, I know you're advanced, so many of you have already found the answer. Yes, il est mort, literally, he is dead, il est mort, or he died, because it's an être verb, right? So, or a helping verb, auxiliary, uh, c'est l'auxiliaire être, d'accord? Auxiliaire être. So, you have to say, il est mort, he died. But when you hear he died, you can hear either he's dead or he died. D'accord? All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like it, share it with everybody, subscribe to this channel, and visit our website at language-city.com and join us. We have over a thousand subscribers and students who have purchased the course or subscribed to the course. It's beautiful. I love it. People, more and more people from the UK, uh, more and more people from Australia, and obviously still a big majority of Americans and many, many Canadians, d'accord? All right, so visit our website, uh, send me a message either in the forum below or um, by email at alex at language-c.com and I will see you soon at Language City. Salut!